Hello everyone, Michael Damiani here from Easy Allies, and I'm joined by the Final Fantasy 16 team. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Um, can we get some introductions before we dive into some questions here? All right. Uh, Soken Sangara. We're going to start with Soken. I'm Masayoshi Soken. <laughs> Final Fantasy 16 composer. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, creative director to Genzeku Kek Hontan to Shimahiro des. And my name is Gazutoyo Maihiro, and uh, I am the creative director and also wrote the main scenario script. Yay! 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 Uh, Final Fantasy 16 no uh, combat director of Tantoshima uh, Suzuki Ryota. And I am Final Fantasy 16's combat director, Ryota Suzuki. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and then I am Michael Christopher Koji Fonks, the localization director on Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I have been so excited to do this interview since I finished the game. Uh, I'd like to begin by uh, uh, starting with a question for my hero son. Yeah. Um, how did the experience writing for Final Fantasy 16 differ from your previous works like A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward? Um, so Final Fantasy XIV, again, is an MMO. Um, and in an MMO, it's the player that is the hero. And so you have to have this silent protagonist. And with Final Fantasy XVI being all offline, it is Clive's story. And so that's the biggest difference, is having to write a silent protagonist versus a protagonist that has his own voice and his own character. And of course, then there's the obvious, an MMO keeps going. The story never ends, whereas um, a package game, you have a beginning and you have an end. Yeah, I never really thought about that, but now that you mention it, yeah, eh, that is the difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, this ne next question um, is for Suzuki-san. Um, Similar style. Uh, how did your experience working on 16 differ from your previous works? So I've, you know, worked on both, um, you know, on action games, both at my previous company as well um, as here at Square Enix. And so, again, it's creating another action game. Um, but the biggest difference between creating an action game for Final in Final Fantasy 16 here at Square Enix is that um, our target is different. Um, the target for Final Fantasy 16 was not just those hardcore, heavy user action players. It we were targeting those players, but we're also targeting um, those people who had never really played an action game before, or never even really wanted to play an action game before. And we had to create this system that would bring in those players as well, and make something that was accessible for those players, but also enjoyable for the hardcore players as well, um, and design something for both. <laughs> yeah, now that you say that, that, that really makes sense. <laughs> uh, this next question is for uh, Soken san. Um, can I say a thing? Uh, how was the experience of composing for 16 different from your work on Final Fantasy XIV? Again, it's the difference between an MMO um, and an offline uh, standalone package game. Um, again, we both, when composing, we both want to focus on that game experience and that sound experience because um, that's what's very important um, but with um, an MMO um, and your sound engine you have a lot more limitations of what you can do and what you cannot do um, with a package game again there's still some limitations with the hardware but you can do a lot more um, and those limitations are much fewer and so it's about pushing those limits and seeing what you can do with that and, and creating this engine that's going to make take full advantage of the hardware that you have MMO again it's, it's the same with um, you know MMOs, when you're talking about like graphics as well, you have all of these different limitations and there's much more um, things that you have to follow when you're creating an MMO and you have a lot more freedom um, when you're creating a package game. Um, you have a lot fewer of those limitations. I mean, with an MMO, you have hundreds of players on the screen. You have to display them all at the same time. So there's m many limitations of what you can do. With a package game, you're only showing one character and so you can have a lot more detail there, um, things like that. And you can, you know, work with the memory in different ways than you can um, when you're working on an MMO. So what were some of the narrative challenges you face by having the game set during three different periods of Clive's life. Final Fantasy 16 is a story about Clive, and we wanted to tell a story about his whole life. And that was actually easier by splitting it up into three different um, areas, because then we could focus on each of those three areas rather than having to tell that whole story in one timeline. 
分けた分その一つ一つをしっかりと書ききらないといけないからそこのまあ難しさはあ,のありました。Um, but again, that also、um, you know, hampered us as well because, because you split it up into three. You have to create three separate stories rather than just one. And so that was difficult as well. I couldn't help but notice many of the boss fights, specifically the dominant and the icon battles, featured mechanics that felt like something you'd see in an MMORPG. What led you to the decision to go in this direction with those fights? So, <laughs> 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 When approaching、um, the boss battle design,、um, we didn't go out of our way to say, oh, we want to make this like an MMO.、Um, but when deciding how we're going to do these battles、um, and what type of attacks、uh, monsters we're going to use,、um, one thing that we really wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that the battles were fair, that the players knew. When they're getting attacked, where the attacks are going to come from.、Um, and so,、um, when creating those,、um, the designer that created those just happened to have worked on Final Fantasy XIV and kind of, you know, had done things like that in the past where, you know, you have the effects on the ground that show where the attacks are going to come. So players know where they're going to come and will understand where the damage is coming from. And so it just kind of turned out that the guy that was working on those battles actually happened to work on Final Fantasy XIV as well, and it all kind of came together like that. そう結局でも我々って14と16同時に作ってるからそれはねあの一部ねスタッフもかぶるしね似た<笑>、うん、まあその一見似たようなところも出てくる。Um, and this is not just、um, Battle as well, but I mean, you have CBU3 <laughs> working on Final Fantasy XIV、yes. and Final Fantasy XVI, so you're going to have a lot of that kind of crossover. You're going to feel a lot of XIV in XVI and XVI、oh. and XIV. <laughs> definitely noticed that. Just <laughs> <laughs> I, ver- I very much enjoyed it though. So,、um, this next question is for Sokin san.、Um, I've been waiting to ask you about this question. <laughs>、uh, as a fan of your work in Final Fantasy XIV,、um, to me, the track that highlighted your creative range was the music for the Titan vs. e f r e e t fight.、Uh, given how many crazy renditions you've already crafted for Titan in Final Fantasy XIV, how challenging was it to come up with another unique take on that battle theme? <laughs> I mean, this is maybe something that might be specific to games created in Creative Business Unit 3, but、um, there's always a sense that you have to go above and beyond what came before. And so, you know, we had what we had in Final Fantasy XIV, and looking at that and thinking, okay, and it's not like someone told me to go above and beyond, but you feel like, okay, I have to go above and beyond what I did before, and that's why it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. But on the other hand, I mean, you know, so can you really wanted to go crazy there, right? And yeah, it did. Titan, though. I mean, it's Titan, right? Yes, yes. BU3 is Titan. That's right. I mean, when you talk about CBU3's Titan, it's Titan. Yes. It's Titan, right? Yeah. I mean, you have to go all out. Out with Titan. <laughs> I was getting flashbacks during the battle too, especially the, the,、mm. the Hugo version of the fight with all the、mm. same AoEs from 14 going out. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no! Battle no more, 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 There was nowhere to fall off. <laughs> was in a room. <laughs> 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 But I mean, there is some falling, I guess. Okay. And、uh, that was a song you did, you did lyrics for? <laughs> Can we confirm、um, that? Yes. Okay. I did、uh, the lyrics for because there's multiple versions、yes. and, and multiple、uh, phases in that battle. And so the music changes from one to another. I did the lyrics for all of those phases. Nice. And a little bit of singing. <laughs> so can too. A little bit. A little, little bit. bit. <laughs> one of the things that impressed me was the level of depth found in the narrative of many of the later side quests,、mm-hmm. um, especially those that involved key NPCs and locations that would evolve over the course of the game. How challenging is it to write an in depth side quest that feels meaningful yet could be completely missed by the player since they're optional?、Mm-hmm. So, まあ、main story を so, again, we started writing this story,、um, and it was、uh, again the story about Clive,、um, and we focused on Clive.、Um, and then, of course, Clive, through his journey,、um, he has a lot of different encounters. He meets a lot of people on, on the way. And as I'm writing the story, I'm thinking, 
it'd be kind of great to talk a little bit more about、um, this character as well. So, where am I going to do that?、あのー、um, and so, while again, a lot of the side quests we wanted to talk about a little bit more about the world or the villages that you went to and the things that are happening in these villages, we also realized that, you know, Not only myself, but players are going to want to know a little bit more of these characters、um, that appear in Clive's lives、um, and you know, learn about the backgrounds of these characters, what they're feeling, what they're thinking. And that's kind of where we started. And so、um, we decided to create these special character quests. And、um, then you have these character quests where, again, we had. When we created、um, the world and we created the characters, we had all of this background information for us to use.、Um, but then we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could get this、um, to the players as well? So let's create these characters so we can learn more about these characters. And so we already had this background information, and it was just about creating these quests so we could give that information to the players. Was it a challenge to capture the spirit of the iconic Final Fantasy jobs in a real time action game?、Uh, for example, I fought multiple dragoons and ninjas、uh, that utilized very familiar abilities.、Um, and I even noticed like Jill's weapons and skills resembled the classic Red Mage. So, was that a, a bit of a challenge to capture those in a, a real time action game? Well, so this is the Yeah, this is really interesting. It's, I mean, we did this、um, on purpose, not just for the enemies, but also for Clive as well.、Um, it was. Trying really hard to bring that Final Fantasy feel, that Final Fantasy essence、um, into the combat and into battles、um, in Final Fantasy XVI.、Um, and you, know, you think back to、um, the pixel versions of Final Fantasy games and trying to imagine okay, back then, you know, they really wouldn't move a lot, but if this was in you know, these beautiful modern graphics, how would these actions、um, be portrayed、um, in this game? And how would Players experience those and trying to figure out ways to represent those、um, in the game. And again, not only for the enemies, but for Clive's abilities as well, bringing in those、um, touches of past Final Fantasies to bring it in and make, you know, give the game and the combat a very Final Fantasy feel. I, re- I really appreciate it. <laughs> the time the Dragoon did a Mirage Dive, one of them, the multiple Dragoons, when I did that, I was the, all the ones coming down, I was like, oh no. <laughs> like, but I loved it so much. So thank you. Mirage Dive, and you're like, oh no, it's like, pom 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 pom, and you're like, <laughs> Unless my mind was playing tricks on me, I felt like I heard several familiar notes and themes woven into some of the music in 16. Was I just imagining things, or did you include a few references to some past works? Yes, that was on purpose. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>、um, and you could probably、um, recognize that even within Final Fantasy XVI,、um, because we gave、um, themes to not only the nations, but you'd have themes、yes. for the characters as well that we'd carry out through、um, the whole、uh, narrative. So, when you say you have a certain character, and there's a character where、um, you have there's a cutscene where that character appears, or you have a battle where that character appears, or where you have some kind of flashback where that character appears,、mm-hmm. you're going to hear、yeah. that melody, and it's going to be in the arrangement. You're not going to hear the same song, but you're going to hear certain melodies that you've heard in the past,、um, and you're going to hear that refrain, and that phrase will come back. And in your mind, you'll be like, Heard that somewhere before, and you'll be able to connect to the scene with the character, and it's like we're just kind of casting this magic spell on you、um, to get you to recognize and tie that all together. Your, your use of leitmotif is very, very good in this game, so thank you. So, in the arrangement, it's very good. Thank you very much. That was really tough to do, a lot of work, but thank you. I hear our son. The stories focus on the theme of brotherhood and the strong bonds between Joshua and Clive、mm. uh, as one of the game's central themes.、Um, Final Fantasy is no stranger to iconic siblings.、Mm. Did you feel any pressure to live up to the series' expectations、mm. with Clive and Joshua? <laughs> so, I mean, it was always、um, part of my plan、um, to write a story about that relationship、um, between Clive and his brother. That was one of the main themes for me. And so,、um, going into it, I didn't feel that. That much pressure because that's something I wanted to do all along. Tada, so no, but game of that again,、um, one of the most difficult things was is like when you get players to play, so you need players to fall in love with Joshua as well. And so, figuring out a way, a writing a way to get players to fall in love in Joshua and really empathize with the Joshua character、um, is something that you know we had to put a lot of effort into because that's very important to the story. But, Tada, Ima, Mitchell, that's the Joshua, the Tabit, Chatter, 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. And, you know, we can't, um, you know, ever talk about uh, Joshua's journey um, in here because you know Joshua's journey is a it's a it's a very one spoilery one, I suppose. Well, like yes. Are we gonna cut this? Are we gonna cut this? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. It should be okay. And then Joshua, no, so no. But again, I mean, you know, by creating the situation where the players really start to feel for Joshua, that then brings understanding to why Clive has to go through this down this path of revenge um, because now the players feel the same way Clive does and will empathize with what Clive has to do and where he goes. He was worried about making it too spoilery before but I think we're okay. Okay. I mean, we're okay. Yeah. I, I know where it goes. I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, for uh, Suzuki-san, uh, what sort of challenges did you face in balancing the multiple icon abilities and allowing players to mix and match those skills as they progress through the game? Again, this kind of goes back to when designing the combat. We're designing this combat system not for only hardcore players, but for you know new players as well. And we're designing this for a very, very large target audience. That um, you know, when approaching um, the abilities, um, again, Clive earns his abilities by you know, playing through the game, going through the story, and through the different encounters that he has, he gains um, these new abilities. Um, you know, in the beginning, um, we had the system set up where you could use all of the abilities at once. Um, but ultimately, we decided to limit this down to only channeling three icons at once. And because, again, this is full real-time action, if um, you have too many options in the battle, it can become very, very overwhelming. Um, and we didn't want it to be overwhelming for players, um, so that's why we decided to limit the amount of actions so that the players wouldn't have too much um, to think about. They could still strategize, but it wasn't going to be overwhelming. We did. And so from there, it was about finding that balance. We know that um, players that are really good at action games, they're going to be able to handle more. And so what is the minimum amount um, that we can give them that they'll still be able to enjoy the battle? But then on the other hand, so we have the action play gamers that are not, uh, the players that are not as good at action, um, how, what is going to be the max that we can give them before they start feeling overwhelmed and finding that perfect number? And we came to the number of three icons and two abilities for each. Um, what we focused on um, when creating the actual abilities is that um, in a lot of games you have those abilities that you learn first will be very basic and simple and not as powerful and then th the abilities that you get in the end game will usually be a lot more complex and a lot more powerful and we didn't want to create that we wanted um, to have these abilities kind of feel just as powerful and the same um, throughout the game and then let the players um, choose which ones they want to use depending on play styles or situations in the games. Things that they wanted to do, things that they couldn't do, finding the right combination that you'd have, you know, you can do this, but this is a little bit lower, so let's fill it in by mixing and matching and finding that perfect combination that fits like a puzzle um, and that fits with each person's uh, different type of play style and making that fully customizable without having to think about, okay, this is an end game one, so everyone's going to use this because because it's the most powerful, that's not the case. I noticed, aside from the brief jingle that plays when you mounted Chocobo, mm -hmm. there was no Chocobo theme or music. Uh, I was looking forward to hearing it, uh, and when it didn't play, I thought maybe something wrong was, was something was wrong with my copy of the game. Uh, what led you to the decision to forego a, a Chocobo theme in this game? So this is a question I'm asked actually quite a lot. Okay. Yeah, I know. So this is one of those things like I actually went into it thinking I was going to make a track for it and I actually did create oh. uh, a Chocobo track. Tada! However, um, again, this is one of, could be a little bit on the, the edge of spoilery. Um, we all know that the, you know, the Chocobo that um, Clive rides has a history. And so trying to find this uh, perfect song that not only matched the Valacian world and the theme, but also the story and the lore um, behind this Chocobo turned out being very, very, very difficult to do. <laughs> and so, for example, um, you have uh, like the Final Fantasy prelude that you know, and that's in a major key. But if you, you can switch it to a minor key to give it a darker, you know, more sad feel. With the Chocobo theme, uh -huh. you switch that into minor, <laughs> It's not the Chocobo theme anymore. 
あの前広ともすごい。And so again, we discussed this、um, a lot、um, between myself and my hero san. Like, what is, you know, what do we have to do here? What can we do to make this work?、Um, and we tried many different ways. We tried many different、um, you know, things right up until, you know, Pretty much the end of development, and、um, nothing really worked. And so we finally came to the conclusion that rather than having the song while you're writing it, we're just going to have a jingle that plays when you get on, and hopefully that will help keep that immersion and keep everyone you know, grounded in the world. And so,、um, even with this jingle, though,、um, once we decide, okay, we're going to do jingle, then there's the question of, okay, how long does the jingle have to be? If it's too long, then it starts getting in the way of what you're doing on the screen. If it's too short, then people don't realize it's the jingle for when you ride the chonkobo.、Um, and so, again, they've had this long back and forth between myself and my hero san to find the perfect、um, length, and we finally got that optimized to where it is now. やっぱねアクションゲームだからね、うん、爽快感重視っていうところがやっぱ強いから、うん、And again I mean because it's an action game it's all about that, that feel and make sure that it feels perfect and fits、um, that, the tempo and, and the speed of the game and so I think what we have is good、mm-hmm. Thank you That's like the most complicated process for deciding a chocobo theme ever <laughs> soなの。まあ、あの第三が作るファイナルファンタジーはどっかちょっとひねくれてる。But again, I mean, you know, it's probably just because it's CBU3 and we just like to do things differently. <笑> we don't like to follow that. これはでもさ、説明すると結構なネタバレになっちゃうから、うん、なかなかちょっと、ね、なかなか難しい,、ね、ないかもね。うんうん um, but this is another one of those things because it's so、um, you know, closely intertwined with the story. We can't talk too much about this because it's going to, again, spoil everything. So. Are you allowed to clarify the specifics of how Platinum Games and Creative Business Unit 1 were involved in 14?、Uh, after the announcement yesterday during the pre launch event, it seems like everyone online is assuming they helped with. Combat, but are you allowed to clarify that or no?、あのーまあ、so, yes,、uh, Kingdom Hearts team and the Platinum Games team they did help us with、uh, the combat.、Okay. Mm. Can't say exactly <laughs> which part, but yes,、um, because、mm. you know, that's what they're known for. They're known for combat, and so yes, they helped us out. Tada, ma, I know, six things play, stay more at it, but ah, Coco Jan. では、Thank you very much.、Mm-hmm. This is exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. Did at any point you consider allowing the player to have direct control over the few NPCs who do join you in combat, like Jill or Sid?、Uh, so, yeah,、um, you know, there w a s discussions early on about you know, whether we would、um, uh, have the players be able to control maybe some of the NPCs.、Um, but ultimately,、um, you know, we decided that this is. 
Clive's story. Um, and from a narrative perspective, we wanted to tell Clive's story. And so we felt it was um, kind of a mismatch um, and it didn't fit that scenario to have Clive controlling other, or having the players control other people than Clive because this is Clive's story, not those other characters' stories. Um, and, uh, and this was decided very early on that we wanted to just focus on Clive and Clive only. Um, that said, um, Clive is joined by Torgal, um, always um, at his side. And this is because Torgal plays such a, uh, an important role in, in Clive's life. He's there from when Clive is younger all the way till the end. And so unlike those other NPCs, I mean, Torgal's always there. And so we wanted to maybe represent that relationship in battle as well. And so by giving um, the player the ability to give these pet commands to Torgal um, kind of represents that relationship that the two have, that close relationship, um, while also kind of raising the ceiling on what you can do um, in battle as well, because you can give those commands and then do these combos and, and uh, make the battle even more exciting. I know you already talked about some of the technical differences between uh, composing for Final Fantasy 16 versus your previous works. Did it composing for 16 feel in any way more restrictive uh, because of its single player nature compared to like something like Final Fantasy 14? Yeah, no, in mm. Actually, um, no, I, no, I don't. I didn't feel that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was. I was able to do pretty much everything I wanted to do. Yeah, but again, that sound design con concept is going to be different. Um, uh, for Final Fantasy 14 and Final Fantasy 16. Um, and again, you have different engines. The engines are going to be different. Um, the sounds and the sound effects are going to be different. Um, and what you do is basically you work with what you have and you do everything that you want to do with what you have and the technology that you have. And I think for 14, I've been able to do that. And what I had on Final Fantasy 16, I was able to do whatever I wanted to do on 16 as well. And it's just about finding that. Last question for you, Soken. Um, yes. And for. For you too. Okay. For Fuji <laughs> Fox. <laughs> um, well, the two of you <laughs> consider performing that wonderful rendition of Titan at FanFest, even though it's not a 14 song. Would you consider doing that live? What should we do? What should we do? <laughs> Rather than asking Yoshida san, maybe we should ask the players whether they would. Yeah, because you know, there might be some people that are like, this is 14, why are you bringing 16 stuff to 14? I feel like you know what the answer is going to be if you ask them. So maybe uh, just ask the people on Twitter, like, you know, tell him on his Twitter whether they want him to, you know. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. You can't sing, you can't sing that? <laughs> you, 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 you. I can sing that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I, okay. <laughs> I mean. Yes. I mean, if the fans really want it, then okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Given the, how much work went into this game and how much it seems like you enjoyed working on it, um, would you like to continue maybe working on a, a follow-up to 16 in the future or work on a, another similar project together again? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, this so for me, um, I got the opportunity to work with some very, very talented people, um, whether they be game designers or sound designers or programmers, um, and worked with all of them to create um, this very complex um, combat system. Um, and it was very, very easy to work with th everyone. Um, and, uh, you know, I would want to do something. I would just ask somebody, and they'd make it happen for me. Um, I wanted to test something out. I'd ask somebody you know, they would help me find a way to test that really easily. And so um, even if the next project, even if this wasn't, um, we weren't making like a sequel to Final Fantasy 16 or a spinoff to 16, even if it was just a completely different project outside of the Final Fantasy world, I would love to work with the same people I worked on this, at this game because we made a great game and I think we could make a great game again. Um, for me, I think we, I told the story that I wanted to tell and we got to the end and I, so to maybe add something after this um, to continue on the story, I think would be very difficult for me because for me, I finished it. But like uh, Suzuki-san said, I mean, the team was great. 
and I really, really loved working with the team. Um, we have such talented people on CBU3, the Final Fantasy 14, Final Fantasy 16 team. And, um, you know, again, moving forward, even if I wasn't working on something 16 related, I would love to work um, with the same people on, on a different game. So um, this name. For me, I mean, we spent all this time together and made these great connections. Now going to a different team would just be like you'd be throwing it away and you have to start all over again and that's just, you know, I'm too old for that. But to you Jordan was looking at. Again, that was just a joke. <laughs> okay, I, I don't mind. Um, but again, that just kind of is it, um, you know, shows you how again, I how talented I believe um, the CBU3 team is. I mean, everyone is so good at their jobs. I mean, we're here kind of talking about stuff and stuff we're doing, but I mean, there are people way more talented than us that are kind of still hidden on the team. And so for me, I mean, I look at it as there's nothing this team can't do. And so if I'm going to make something new, this is the team that I want to work with. And then there's one more thing. Um, again, um, the way that the development team uh, treats sound, the way they just kind of say, like, I need all these songs, make them. <laughs> I'm thinking that if they, it was any other sound team, they'd be like, we can't do this. I, I'm the only one that can handle that kind of, you know, crazy order system. And so, again, <laughs> they'd have to work. They have to work. We have to work together. <laughs> That's the only way it's going to happen. Is there anything you'd like to say to the viewers before we uh, wrap up here? Final Fantasy 16 is very kind of original new type of game. It's a very, very action heavy game, but it's also heavy on story um, as well. And we have this wonderful, unique world. Um, and I've created the music to kind of fit that. It fits the story and it both fits the battle and it just feels perfect there. Um, and we put a lot of effort into it, into making music that really, really fits the game. And I think we've done that. So um, when you play, make sure you turn up the volume. That's very important. And, you know, play to the end. Um, and we hope you really enjoy it. Again, we mentioned before um, Final Fantasy 16, the combat has been designed um, for those heavy users um, of action games as well as um, the newcomers as well. Um, but um, what's going to happen probably on that first playthrough is that the, a lot of those hardcore players are going to play through and say, you know, this is actually kind of easy, you know, um, than most of the action games I play. Um, but that's done on purpose. That first run through um, is to focus on the story. We want the players to enjoy the story and enjoy the narrative and get used to the action. Um, where the real challenge comes is on that second playthrough. So those hardcore users are gonna really enjoy it on that second playthrough. You're gonna carry over your data from the first run through. You choose that Final Fantasy mode and then you're gonna get the true challenge. And then once you get to that true challenge, there's another hell awaiting. Um, <laughs> Maybe the 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 Dota, Dota mode, Dota mode. <laughs> the Dota mode. <laughs> the Dota mode. <laughs> it's not <laughs> called the Dota mode, but yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Final Fantasy 16 um, is something that Creative Business Unit uh, Three has worked so hard on um, to create um, this great experience. That's something that people will say is truly a successor, um, the Final Fantasy series. Um, and uh, you know, if you haven't played it, the demo's out there. Try it out, and if you love it. Purchase it and love it even more. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much to all of you again. And uh, thank you all our viewers. And uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But it never really ends, does it? No.